Hello. And welcome to a quick overview of the PAN Lab. PAN is a series of workshops and shared tasks on digital text forensics and stylometry, as well as applications thereof. Since its inception in 2007, every year, we have been organizing a selection of shared tasks from these fields. Let's take a look. Up to now, 19 different shared tasks have been organized, many more than once in a row for a total of 51 editions. We group them into three broad categories. Authorship analysis is one of the main goals of digital text forensics and stylometry, including the tasks of author identification, author profiling, and multi-author analysis, each in various incarnations. We subsume the adversary task of author obfuscation in this category, which is actually a synthesis task. Stylometry has applications in computational ethics. Our tasks include analyzing the morality of certain writing or speech acts, and the quality of content found online, here focusing on Wikipedia. The originality of a text plays a crucial role in many educational and business environments. Here, we study information retrieval technology to search and extract cases of text reuse and plagiarism. So, let's have a look at what's been going on in 2020. We've been organizing four tasks, one about author identification, two about author profiling, and one about multi-author analysis. I'll walk you through them. First, let's look at the authorship verification task. The task of authorship verification is perhaps one of the most basic ones in author analysis. Given two texts, determine if they are written by the same author. Although it has been studied for years, suitable ground truth is still difficult to be obtained. Following the idea of Kestemont et al., we employ fan fiction as a new source of ground truth that is abundantly available. Our evaluation data are based on a large-scale crawl of fanfiction.net that was kindly shared by Biscoff et al. Fan fiction is the art of writing an original story within a universe, or fandom, as it were, invented by another author. Take Harry Potter invented by J.K. Rowling as an example. Thousands of authors have written more than 825,000 stories, some of which exceedingly long. For example, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality by Eliezer Yudkowsky alone is as long as all of Rowling's books put together. It amounts to more than 660,000 words. A good book, by the way. From the cleansed crawl data, we constructed a total of 53,000 text pairs. Half of them from the same author, the other half from different authors, carefully controlling the fandom. This marks the largest verification corpus available to date, enabling deep learning technology. However, we also created a smaller subset as an alternative training dataset. This furthers inclusivity, since not everyone has the means to process gigabytes of data. It also enables research on approaches that get by with small datasets. For evaluation, we used four measures, two of which are pretty standard. The other two also take model uncertainty into account. A model that is uncertain about its decision should not return an answer, but rather say so, and such behavior is what these measures favor. As was done in past years, this year too, we asked participants to deploy their software on our cloud-based evaluation platform Tira. And two baselines were provided. A standard TFIDF character tetragram model. And a compression-based model. This task follows a three-year agenda. This year, we constructed a closed-set verification scenario, where the test data comprise exclusively authors and fandoms also found in the training data. Next year, the task will become more difficult as it we will switch to open-set verification, where the test data will not contain any authors or fandoms found in the training data. The final task in this arc will be a surprise task with an eye on realism. Nine participants supplied a total of 12 runs. 
Interestingly, most participants opted for training on the small dataset, and not all were able to benefit from having trained on the large one. A more in-depth discussion is found in the overview paper. The task has been organized jointly by researchers from the universities of Antwerpen, the Aegean, Weimar, and Leipzig. Next up are two author profiling tasks. First, profiling fake news spreaders on Twitter. This task is defined as follows. Given a Twitter feed, determine whether its author is keen to be a spreader of fake news. As an input we employ the timelines of Twitter users who have been determined to share fake news. The question of whether a news item is fake or not was determined by checking it against Polyfact and Snopes. The task was offered in two languages. English and Spanish. And 300 training cases have been collected for each of the two languages, plus another 200 each for testing. Accuracy served as an evaluation measure. And just like with all other tasks at PAN, here, too, participants were invited to submit their software and deploy it on Tira. For the task, a total of six baselines have been employed, one of which is a competitive one from industry, supplied by Samanto. Samanto also sponsored the task with an award. It includes a cash prize of 300 euros, which was shared equally among two participating teams who tied on first place. These teams are also the only ones whose approach outperformed the Samanto baseline. And this is interesting, given the fact that this task had a very high number of participants for a shared task, seeing as the task's topic is very timely. A total of 66 participants submitted runs for this task, rendering it one of the most popular tasks in PAN's history. The task has been organized by researchers from Samanto and the University of Valencia. The second author profiling task was celebrity profiling. The celebrity profiling tasks tackled a classic author profiling problem, namely the prediction of an author's demographics, but with a twist. Given the Twitter feeds of the followers, determine the occupation, age, and gender of a celebrity. So, what makes a celebrity? In this task, we operationalize the status of a celebrity by checking for two constraints. A celebrity must be a verified Twitter user, and they need to be sufficiently notable so as to have their own entry on Wikipedia and Wikidata. Remember Eliezer Yudkowsky from before? He's a verified Twitter user as indicated by the blue checkmark next to his name. His followership is not as huge as that of a superstar, though considerable. Moreover, there's a Wikipedia article about him. And a Wikidata item. The good thing about profiling celebrities is that a lot is known about them, including lots of personal details. There are many more besides the three demographics we study in this shared task, albeit, these are the ones available for most celebrities. We constructed a corpus of 2,380 celebrity authors and crawled the timelines of 10 of their followers who are engaged in tweeting. The question now is whether it is possible to predict the age, gender, and occupation of a person based on who follows them. As evaluation measure, we employ the harmonic mean of the per demographic F1 measure. For the age demographic, we include a relaxation with respect to how accurate a person's age should be predicted. The results obtained from the three participants who made a successful submission indicate that, indeed, it is possible to predict a person's demographics based only on their followership. Or put another way, tell me who's following you, and I'll tell you who you are. Finally, the style change detection task. With this series of shared tasks, we tackle one of the most difficult subjects for authorship analysis. Multi-author documents. The task is, given two consecutive paragraphs, determine if there is a style change. 
Since, once again, it is hard to come by the ground truth required to study this task at scale, we resort to emulation. First, we obtained questions and answers from Stack Exchange for a set of paragraphs lengths texts which can be guaranteed to have been written by a single author. We then construct tens of thousands of artificial documents with selections of paragraphs from one to three authors. Furthermore, we set up the task in a way so as to enable to study the influence of topic on the decision by creating documents with a narrow selection of topics in their paragraphs as well as documents with a wide variety of topics. We have further broken down the question into two sub-tasks, namely, to predict whether a document has or has not been written by more than one author. And in case it has, to predict how many authors were participating. The results indicate that the task of predicting whether or not a document is a multi-author document still presents some difficulties, whereas that of determining which parts of a text have been written by different authors works surprisingly well, when considered at the paragraph level. This task has been co-organized by researchers from the universities of Innsbruck, Leipzig, and Weimar. If you wish to participate in any of these shared tasks, even after the conference has passed, the first thing you'll need is the data. To maximize reproducibility and consistency throughout PAN's shared tasks, we have recently started collecting all the datasets that have been constructed for them. The ones for 2020 are thus right at your fingertips. All datasets are being hosted at Zenodo and can be obtained right from there. The Zenodo web page of a dataset contains the necessary information about it. In particular, Zenodo's facilities enable to host data that cannot be shared with everyone. Anyone can submit a request to access the data, and access requests are then reviewed by the respective tasks chairs. So, what's going to happen at PAN's workshop this year? The program can be found right on the event page. We hope you had a chance to attend the keynote of Anastasia Giacchano on misinformation detection in online social networks this morning. If not, a video recording of her keynote will be made available after the conference has passed. The remainder of PAN's program includes, today, another session about the task on profiling fake news spreaders which takes place right after the current session. Tomorrow, there will be another three sessions, one in the morning starting at 9 a.m. European time, and throughout the entire afternoon and evening, starting at 3 p.m. If you wish to follow up on any of the approaches submitted to PAN's shared tasks, you can access all the papers right on the proceedings page. That concludes the overview of PAN. Thank you for your attention. This is Google WaveNet signing off.